you everybody, Dirty Dan here. Welcome to day two of the Christmas series. So I'm back and I'm pretty excited for day two and a lot of people are really hyped for the series. It seemed like there was a really positive response. So I'm really happy about it because I really hope this year we can finally finish it. Uh, that doesn't mean we're not going to have one next year though. Uh, but anyways, so I figured I'd put a little plug in here for the Discord server. I'm going to leave a link in the description to make sure and I'm gonna make sure to set it to never expire because the original video, the link there is expired. People ask me and I'll just send them the link, but I'm just gonna put it in this description to make it not to ever expire. Because there's a reason I wanna plug the Discord server. Because I know a lot of you uh, ask all these questions about you know my next videos, uh, make wanna make suggestions. Well, you can all do it there. And I usually leak a little bit of content before the video comes out. Uh, for example, I'll put it up on screen, the teaser I leaked. Uh, for the video today and a lot of people were hyped up for it but there was a couple people a little doubtful uh which is understandable because as you saw the teaser image is quite interesting actually uh well without further ado let me show you guys what we're going to be working on today oh yeah <laughs> it's i'm i'm serious this is real this i won't tell you what's in this box but we're about to find out uh but yeah uh, I'm really excited to show you guys what's in this box. So interesting story, before you get to see what's in here, you gotta listen to me talk. And um, shame on you who uh, skipped through the video to go see what's in this box. What is wrong with you? Uh, but anyways, so this actually has an interesting story. Uh, I think it was a year ago now, about the same time, maybe I think it was January. I went to a train show called the New Eagle Train Show. And it was an amazing show. That's where I got, I think I got my Brass Atlantic. Yes, I did get my Brass Atlantic. And this I also got, which, funny enough, I found it at the bottom of a $40 junk bin. Um, the dude basically said, uh, I, I asked him if he had any junk. He pulled out a little bin. There was two silver streaks, a couple F units that were all Santa Fe. Uh, there was, I think there was a Conrail engine. I don't exactly remember what was in there. There was three German steam engines, and they were really crappy. Those play art ones, I'm pretty sure everybody's seen them by this point. But it was a really crappy box. But then, through the actual plastic of the bin, I could see this. And I was like... So, I immediately bought the bin because I knew this yellow box. It looked like a specific color. I knew it was either a really early Tyco box, or it was a Hobbytown box. And I was like, you know, it's worth a shot. There's enough stuff in there that it's worth 40 bucks on its own, so we'll have to figure out what's in the box later. And yeah, so went home, and I started up a live stream, started going through everything. I saved all of this for last. And when I opened the box, and right after that, guess whose phone ran out of storage? So I had to go delete a bunch of stuff and go through iCloud and get rid of a bunch of random garbage I've recorded. Um, and I actually ended up coming across a video that I'm going to upload tomorrow, so... But anyways, now it's time to show you what's inside the box. Boop. And reveal. Yes, that is a Chesapeake in Ohio, what I believe to be a GP9. Correct me if I'm wrong. But it is a real Hobbytown locomotive. It It's a chassis kit, as it says on the box. And so the shell, I'm not 100% sure where the shell came from. I think it might be Athern. I, I honestly don't know. Um, but I can see where somebody covered over some horn holes here. But in all honesty, this is an amazing chassis. It's so well built. But see, the problem was the, there was a reason it was in a junk bin. Uh, I actually took it apart before when I got it, and it was just a disconnected wire. But the thing has never really ran perfectly. And I think it's about time that I finally spiff it up a little bit. We'll give it a little tune-up. 
because uh, it makes some noises, you know, it don't run perfect. It really could use a little bit of work. Um, I'll actually show you the inside of the chassis, which is interesting because it does not have the original motor. And by the way, Hobbytown is actually still in business. Um, it's just crazy. Uh, well, I mean, not really because they make amazing chassis, but here you go. Here is the chassis for those of you who wondered. And as you can see, we got a Mishima motor, which is a good quality motor. Drive shaft running through here, big giant flywheel, and then gears running, a gear tower going down to the trucks. And it's just kind of noisy. Uh, and it's a very smooth drive, by the way, though. Um, but it could use a little bit of assistance. Uh, you know, the, the, the front coupler is kind of messed up. You know, it's just, uh, I don't think it's been oiled. Uh, even though it spins really smoothly, but I feel like it could use some oil. And we'll, we'll clean out all the old stuff. And I'd also like to take apart the trucks and see what kind of lubricant's in there. I'm, I'm going to assume it's not very good. Whatever is in there. And then check out the crazy amount of weight in this thing. Somebody really needed some tractive effort. There is a load of weight in this thing. I honestly don't know why anyone would do this. But, I mean, it's, it looks like somebody put a lot of time into this. I mean, look at this shell. It's beautiful. But uh, without further ado, let me show you exactly how well this runs. Okay, so I got it on the track, and, and yes, very, very smooth. Look at that. That's barely moving. Barely moving. But let's give it a little bit more power. But as you can see, it runs pretty awesome, and most people would call this good, but... I honestly think it could be a little better. So I want to take it apart and do some work to it and also fix this mess of wires because, yeah, it's not great. But anyways, let's get it apart and work on it. Okay, so we have it on the workbench, and I want to show you guys another awesome thing about these. Um, you literally only need one screwdriver to disassemble this whole thing. It's a single flathead. Uh, and you can basically take this down to the bare frame, which is amazing. That's another thing I love about Hobby Town chassis. They're just so well made. All right, so let's get to tearing this thing down. Okay, just came across a very interesting dilemma when I took this apart. Probably can't hear it, but this makes a really high-pitched squeak whenever you spin this motor. You can't hear it, yeah. But if you spin it real fast, then it makes a real eep noise. So that's a obvious sign that it needs oiled. So I got the truck covers off and honestly, everything in here looks pretty good. These gears are just amazing quality, by the way. So here's the back one. And I'm honestly, I'm just gonna probably clean up these uh, this grease. And then that's about it. I mean, I'm gonna oil up this motor and then basically we're, we're really just putting some new grease in here, honestly. And lubing, lubricating all these bearings because I wanna make sure they don't run out of oil because that's pretty important in one of these and I don't want one of those to wear out because not too easy to get parts for these. Uh, I honestly haven't really looked too much. Um, here's the gear tower. As you can see, these gears are disgusting, so they actually, those are gonna need a cleaning. But uh, yeah, other than that, this is looking pretty promising. <laughs>
All right, well, it's finished. Um, so the outcome wasn't really too insane. Honestly, it didn't really improve nor got worse. So it's about the same. Um, really all I did is put some new lubricants in it and honestly, it really didn't need it, I don't think. I probably spent about an hour wrestling with the bearings though, because that was ridiculous. I've never seen a bearing design that makes you struggle with them for that long. I've never worked on one of these, so I'm not really surprised, but I'm sure I'll get better at it in the future. But without further ado, for the rest of the video, enjoy the shots of this beautiful GP9, I'm thinking. Uh, and see you know, I believe this is also custom, by the way, running. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Okay, yeah, no, I think we're going to have to revisit this guy in the future. Uh, I think I may have made a little worse.